The trailer for Deadpool and Wolverine dropped, and they are set to join the MCU this summer. If that sounds like something that would have been way more exciting five years ago, it's because it is. Like a lost Baldwin trying to rejoin his Marvel brothers, Reynolds probably didn't think he'd be showing up to salvage what's left of an Avengers team that looks less like Cap and Tony and more like this. The trailer looks pretty good, what little there is anyway. Most of the scenes were spoiled through online leaks last summer, so if you followed the production at all, none of that will be new. It contains the typical Ryan Reynolds shtick that made him perfect for the character in the first place, and they put it on full display, with a pegging joke and an F-bomb to show Disney isn't disney this one. Overall, it didn't reveal much, but enough to reassure us if we liked Deadpool in the last two films, this will at least be the same potty mouth fourth wall breaker we've grown accustomed to. Good morning, we're doing open phones. Hi, am I on the air? Yep. Fuck. Thanks. The movie dethroned Spider-Man No Way Home as the most watched trailer at launch with over 365 million views. So if you think superhero fatigue is real, you must be crazy, right? I've seen a few videos pop up questioning if the movie might be able to save the MCU. Assuming it's any good, of course. Well, I think it's fair to say Deadpool and Wolverine might be enough to pacify an audience with yet another swan song for the beloved Hugh Jackman version of poor old Logan. And let's face it, a Marvel Universe without Wolverine is like Peter Parker without his spidey sense. It just doesn't feel right, you know? But in the end, it could hit a billion dollars and it still wouldn't be enough to reignite interest in Marvel overall. No, I think the wind has been completely taken out of the MCU's sales for the foreseeable future. You take my bag. You take This video's sponsor, Keeps, is a subscription service that helps men keep their hair. They offer clinically proven treatments that help combat hair loss. It's a convenient and affordable way for men to treat their male pattern baldness from the comfort of their home without ever visiting a doctor's office or pharmacy. It ships right to your door in discreet packaging. You know how I know? Here's a picture of me showing a picture of me holding the box. I use their thickening shampoo and conditioner to keep these flocks flowing, especially after I dye it blue. According to clinical studies, treatments offered by Keeps are 90% effective at treating hair loss and can increase hair growth by up to 35%. Keeps keeps it personal because everyone's treatment plan will look different. Your plan is unique to you and recommended by a licensed medical provider. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just looking to take better care of the hair you have, Keeps has you covered. Hair loss stops with Keeps. For a special offer to get started, go to keeps.com slash moviecynic or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash moviecynic. Place your Lincoln hat on for a second and be honest. If you're excited for this, it's because of Hugh Jackman's Wolverine being in a movie with Deadpool, more than about either character entering the MCU. That can't be too much of a stretch, since the trailer only showed Wolverine's silhouette. Geez, I wonder if the studio knows what people want to see. People aren't excited about the new MCU movie, they're excited for the new Deadpool movie, one with Wolverine specifically. I was expecting the multiverse to play a major role in the movie, but it still didn't stop me from groaning a bit when the TVA appeared in the trailer. When I see those characters introducing Reynolds to the timeline, it just makes me think baggage, homework, inconsistencies, not the feeling of excitement a franchise crossover should create. It was funny seeing Wade Wilson stare at a screen with Captain America on it. Basically a screen of the MCU everyone would rather him be a part of. And I mean, there's a reason they showed those characters and not Captain Marvel, for example. Maybe because current MCU's no one's favorite. No, no, overall, those 300 million plus views for the trailer in the first 24 hours came from the goodwill towards Reynolds' Deadpool and the inclusion of this old-timer, Hugh Jackman. He was first seen as Wolverine 24 years ago, which is fucking crazy that he's been playing this character for one reason or another since the Y2K era. If you're too young and don't know what that is, well, there you go. That's how long he's been playing the character. And we last saw Jackman swinging the claws in 2017's Logan, a well-received and successful final outing for him. Well, obviously not final. Which means there's some nostalgia money to be made. And a few years ago, Spider-Man No Way Home proved that when it comes to member berries, it doesn't have to be characters or moments from a well-liked series to get people dial up to 11. So if you bring them something that people actually loved, like Wolverine, that's money, baby. Sentimentality, nostalgia, when wielded wisely, they're powerful tools. That's what Hugh Jackman's return as Wolverine has the potential to be. Nostalgia done right with big box office potential. All of this, the TVA, Jackman's return, it's just reality. No one's going to the theater to see the TVA on the big screen. It's to see something everyone's wanted to see for years. And with Jackman in his mid-50s, this really does feel like the last ride. 
Even if they somehow convince Jackman to return one more time for a Secret Wars movie, he's not going to be the mainline Wolverine. Hell, this isn't even the Wolverine from the Fox universe that we remember. In order to convince Jackman to return, they assured him that the story wouldn't interfere with the ending of Logan. So Deadpool 3's Wolverine is apparently some random variant. Whatever version he's playing, Jackman is too advanced in age to play the character for another 10 plus year commitment that joining the MCU would require, even if he wanted to. So this is closer to a one and done than anything else. Despite a surefire hit on their hands, Marvel Studios isn't planting seeds for a major Reynolds Jackman franchise starter here. Jackman's Wolverine coming into the MCU would have been much more exciting around the 2012 to 2019 Avengers era. Seeing him interact with Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. would have potentially been iconic. But that time has passed, and Disney's deep pockets helped them get what they could out of it, getting Jackman back in the saddle one last time. But that's what it is. One last time. Wolverine might be an interesting enough character to have as a centerpiece of the MCU in the future, but it certainly won't be this version of him, and audiences are aware of that. No MCU savior here. Like Jackman, Ryan Reynolds isn't going to be rescuing Marvel from anything either. After Deadpool 3 was announced, he said that this would be the last time he plays the character. I personally doubt that. I could see him popping up in the Secret Wars especially, but he's also not long for retirement whether this is the last time he suits up or not. He's pushing 50, and he's not in it for the long haul. In the movie, Deadpool and Wolverine is no Iron Man. Where that movie felt like a franchise starter, this movie is supposed to be a finale for the character. It's why Reynolds wanted Hugh Jackman back in the first place. It's going out with a bang. In fact, I would suggest this movie's more like a combination of Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and Spider-Man No Way Home. With Jackman's return, it has the nostalgia baiting of Spidey while feeling like a finale in the way Guardians did. Guardians in particular felt completely separated from the rest of the MCU, which probably helped in the end and why its success didn't translate into high viewership numbers later on for Secret Invasion or Big Box Office for the Marvels. Proved that people will still support characters they care about, but the time of the interconnected universe is coming to an end, at least in terms of how audiences interact with them. No longer are people catching the side projects that get the whole story. Deadpool 3 is going to be successful because of the characters within, not its connection to the broader MCU narrative. After the reputation implosion Marvel has experienced, it would honestly be best for the movie to stay as far away from the MCU timeline as possible. It's funny how what once was considered an imperative, like getting all the Marvel characters under the MCU umbrella, has now become a distraction and a problem, at least in my opinion. The biggest superhero hits over the last few years felt genuinely disconnected, and not just MCU movies. The Batman was a hit, Joker was too, and Spider-Man No Way Home, despite its MCU connections, wasn't popular because Doctor Strange was in it. It's because Spider-Man was in it. A lot of them. Around She-Hulk time in 2022, Deadpool 3 was finally announced via Reynolds' Twitter account, with Hugh Jackman walking in the background agreeing to play Wolverine again. As exciting as that seemed, it also felt like Disney had hit the panic button. With a film and TV slate closer to She-Hulk quality than Avengers, they knew the jig would be up and a guaranteed hit was absolutely necessary. Well, things got even worse because after the Marvels lost the company $200 million, Disney reshuffled their Marvel plans and Deadpool 3 became the lone MCU cinema release of 2024. Captain America 4? Reshoots. Ironheart? It'll be released... someday? As far as Deadpool 3, it actually had its release date moved forward to July. I don't know what else to call that except the sound of a company shitting itself. So for better or worse, Deadpool 3 is now way more important to the MCU than it ever needed to be. And I see the vision. Assuming this movie's good, it lets Marvel Studios drag their feet after shitting out multiple movies and shows in a short span of time. The Fox contracts for the X-Men cast will finally be up in 2026, and those roles can finally be cast. And maybe, just maybe, Deadpool 3 will be a palate cleanser from the last MCU poop log entree. And audiences will trust the studio enough moving forward to give Captain Falcon America a try. In Bob Iger terminology, it's worth a shot, right? History says that won't be the case no matter how many convoluted multiverse twists get thrown into this movie. And that's an unfortunate possibility, too. See, my prediction that this movie won't rescue the MCU from box office harakiri is under the assumption it'll be good, or at least the standards of the previous films. If it's bad? Oh shit. With the inclusion and unnecessary pressure of course correcting the MCU, it could spell disaster. After the Marvels, Secret Invasion, and Echo, Disney absolutely cannot afford for this movie to suck. So they find themselves in quite a predicament with this one. If Deadpool 3 is good, as illustrated, it probably won't have any bearing on the success of future shows or movies. But if it's bad, it'll cause even further reputational harm to the floundering franchise that is the MCU. 
If I was Bob Iger and needing a hit movie, I could do a lot worse than bringing Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine. But this guy absolutely doesn't think long term. He's the Joe Biden of CEOs. He's behind on everything. The guy seemingly just discovered video games and is preaching that they're the next thing they're going to lean into, even though Marvel and Disney work with multiple gaming studios. Even with Deadpool joining the incoherent MCU multiverse, the box office outcome probably wouldn't change much whether it had a Marvel Studios or 20th Century Fox banner above the title. Franchises entering the MCU used to get what was called the Avengers Bump. No, not like a Leo Bump. A box office bump. One where a character's mere association with the greater Marvel Universe got people into the cinema. Marvel's decision to license out its major characters in the 90s to stave off financial ruin is well known, and more than a decade after they hoard out Spider-Man to Sony, online pleas were common for the licenses of X-Men, Spidey, and Fantastic Four to revert back to Marvel and have the characters join the then-hyper-successful MCU. This amplified every time Fox produced a mongoloid like X-Men Origins Wolverine, a movie so horrendous Reynolds has made a side hustle out of shitting on it. Or the 2015 Fantastic Four movie. You know, that cinematic abortion. But Fox did produce Deadpool, and those movies are popular for a reason. Deadpool entering the MCU was always going to be a different kind of story, no matter how well the entire Marvel franchise was doing. When fans asked for Spider-Man or the X-Men to leave the clutches of Fox and enter the MCU, it was because those franchises were floundering and it felt like the studios producing their films didn't have a clue what they were doing anymore. And uh, I'm pretty sure Madam Web is going to prove Sony still doesn't. But Deadpool wasn't a popular character in need of a fresh coat of paint like Spider-Man or Wolverine, which Fox actually corrected themselves when they released Logan. No, interestingly, Deadpool by comparison had to be protected from being disney His movies were already well-liked and in good standing, and I remember fears of fucking up this beloved character were present even during the height of the MCU craze. And Deadpool's a movie series that Disney essentially inherited with their purchase of 20th Century Fox. Fans weren't going to let them reboot Deadpool, so there was never any real doubt about Ryan Reynolds making a return. Wade Wilson is one of those exceptional side characters that went on to become one of the more popular ones in a greater ethos. A ripoff of Deathstroke? Yes. An easy way to poke fun at Marvel? Also yes. Does it work? For a lot of people? Absolutely. He's a character that functions in the world of the X-Men but doesn't require the greater Marvel Universe. Two movies of consistent R-rated box office success to the tune of $750 million each means Deadpool 3's connection to the MCU wasn't going to make or break this movie one way or another. The only thing that could have possibly done that is overall superhero fatigue, and the incredible amount of views on the trailer says the combination of Deadpool and Wolverine is definitely an exception to that. People will go to the theater to see how that plays out. The MCU won't be fixed in the end. And someone somewhere will figure out exactly how many hundreds of thousands of dollars per equivalent hour Ryan Reynolds got paid to tell a pegging joke. For right now, I'll leave you with a clip from the Beast Up livestream this week, where we made our Deadpool box office predictions, and you can always come back to this to tell us how wrong we all were. GG's. I'll undercut it. I'll go like 900 million. Just for the nice. sake of yeah. diversity and the guesses. <laughs> <laughs> Who hasn't? A cynic. How much do you think it'll make? Um, I think probably 800 million is my call because that's about what the other ones made and the level of disinterest in superhero movies in general, but then add Wolverine in and it'll probably make up for that, you know, lack of interest. So I, I think probably around the same as, as the other two, and they'll actually see that as a success. I would think wonder how actually, I mean, well, I'll, I'll lowball it and say 750 million just because I, I think it's. The franchise is slightly collapsed out. I think Deadpool is also slightly collapsed out. And yeah, the cameos will help, but I don't know if they'll be enough to really compensate to get up to the billion.